If you're a Florida homeowner and you're considering installing solar panels on your home, then stop right there. I want you to watch this video first because the Florida legislature just passed a new set of rules that could completely change the solar payback. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past nine years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge we talk about all things having to do with home renewable energy systems, solar panels, uh, battery backup systems, and sometimes even generator backup systems as well. Now in today's video we're talking about the new laws that were just passed in Florida and how that can impact the solar investment if solar is something that you're considering for your home. Now one thing I should tell you guys is that this bill has already passed both chambers of the Florida State Legislature. So the House of Representatives has approved it, the Senate uh, just approved it last month, and so it's now heading its way to the governor's desk for signature uh, or hopefully uh, for a veto. One of the things that they're trying to do with this new bill is to reduce the amount of profit that you as a potential homeowner can make using what's called the net metering program. Now the way a typical net metering program works is if you have solar panels on your home during daylight hours generally you're going to have more solar electricity coming in than what your home needs to use at that moment. And so all the excess solar could just be sent back to the power company via net metering. Essentially your meter would be running backwards during daylight hours building up credits on your account so that during the evening hours when the sun's no longer shining you can just draw from those credits that you earned during the daylight hours and the goal is to, to get it to balance out to zero so that at the end of the month there's nothing for you to pay out of pocket in terms of electrical usage. But what they're proposing to do with this new law is not give you the full credit for the excess electricity you send them during daylight so even if you did send them enough electricity during daytime to cover what you pull at nighttime, they're proposing to reduce the credit to 75%, maybe 50%, or eventually just doing away with it altogether. Here, let's actually take a look at some of the specific terms that are being proposed. So beginning January 1st, 2024, and December 31st, 2025, energy credits produced from rooftop solar generation will be reduced to 75% of the value. Then going down, between January 1st, 2026 and December 31st, 2026, the credit will be reduced to 60% of the value. Between January 1st, 2027 and December 31st, 2028, the credit will be reduced to 50% of the value. And then beginning January 1st, 2029, the credit is eliminated altogether. So this is FPL's attempt to completely kill the net metering program, which again is one of the key things that allows the solar investment to be a profitable investment for homeowners and a, and a big incentive for folks to invest in renewable energy on their homes. And so that's why we're opposing this. So that really hurts you in terms of your payback with a net metering solar system. Ideally what you want is true one for one net metering. If you send them a kilowatt hour, you get a credit on your bill for one kilowatt hour. If you draw a kilowatt hour from them, it's the same one credit. So it's an equal one for one trading back and forth. Now they're looking to do away with that. The other thing that they're looking to do is add higher fixed charges. So let's say you do have enough solar on your home to where you can zero out your kilowatt hour usage. They want to raise the fixed charge, basically it's, it's the connection charge, just to have the account active and have the meter turned on. Now like where I live in Virginia, I pay $26 fixed charge just to have my meter active. Even though I, in most months I have my solar completely covering my electrical usage, I still pay that $26. But now some of the largest utilities want to raise that number to even $40 or $50. So even if you made the investment to zero out with solar, zero out your, your electrical usage, you would have to pay now a higher fee just to have that meter account active. And then of course they want to tag on additional fees and surcharges as well. Now that's why we're calling on and solar advocates in Florida are calling on the governor uh, to veto this bill. And it's simply unfair to those who want to make the move towards renewables which is something that we have to do, uh, just in terms of uh, the environmental impact, in terms of, um, frankly, just being more energy independent and self-sufficient uh, at the household level and at the national level. Uh, we, we should be investing and we should be incentivizing 
more renewable energy capacity coming online and not doing the opposite. Now, if we look at the other side of the discussion, um, Florida Power and Light is the utility that's kind of leading the charge on this from their side. And I know if it's anything like here in Virginia, uh, the biggest for-profit utility companies, which in Florida is Florida Power and Light and Duke Energy, um, if it's anything like it is here in Virginia, generally those utility companies are some of the largest, if not the largest donors to campaigns for the slate le legislators. So they do have a lot of influence. And, and basically what the utilities are saying is this, this is their side of the argument. They're saying that, you know, because we invested in running electrical lines to the house and setting up a meter for the house, um, you know, we did all that based on uh, the assumption that we would be able to sell that customer electricity over the next 20 or 30 years. And so that's why we were willing to go ahead and forward invest in running the infrastructure because we knew we were going to sell that customer power over time. And so they figure that, well, with net metering, if, if the customer is actually generating their own electricity and we have to take it back from them when they have more electricity than they need, then that's cutting into our profits and cutting into our paybacks. Now, they don't mention that their profits are guaranteed. I mean, they have a, they have a government, a state-sponsored monopoly to deliver power in their territory. So it's not a matter of them not being profitable. They just simply want to be a little bit more profitable and take some of what solar homeowners have been able to profit by generating their own electricity. Okay, so what, what can you do? If you're a Florida homeowner, a couple things you can do. First thing is, you know, accelerate the process of going solar. Uh, these new rule changes are not set to take effect uh, until January of 2024. So you still have this year and next year if you're you know, considering going solar and you want to get into the current net metering program where you get the full one for one credit, um, consider you know, making that solar decision in the next 12 to 18 months so that we can get the system online before the end of 2023. The other thing that you might consider is, is doing a slightly smaller system. Um, now, there, there's typically two goals when you look at solar powering your house. Some folks want to just make sure that the entire bill is covered with solar. So if you lose net metering credit or you're not getting the full credit amount, then you might not have the best investment return trying to go 100% full solar. But on the other hand, you could target maybe going 40 or 50% solar. So the idea is it, it wouldn't eliminate your electric bill completely, but the system would be sized such that whatever solar you generate could be directly consumed within the home. So you wouldn't have to really worry about the net metering credit because the system would be sized such that you know, all of the electricity coming off those solar panels would be directly consumed inside the home before any of it ever made it back to the utility company. And then the third thing that you might consider doing, and I know a lot of you in the solar surge audience are already looking at this, is adding battery storage to your solar power system. Um, adding battery storage, although it does add a little bit to the cost, is really what allows you to be totally energy independent if you choose to be. So instead of having to sell excess solar back to the power company during peak sunlight hours, you could actually use that excess energy to store in your battery so that then during evening hours, instead of having to pull credits or pull from the power company, you can just draw from the battery. And then of course the next day the sun comes back up and it recharges the battery. So you can continue that cycle as many times as you need in what's called a self-consumption mode. Uh, or if, if we're in a grid blackout and, and you have to operate off the grid in a backup power mode, you know, having that battery storage would allow you to have secure power both day and night, you know, solar during the daytime, bat running off the battery at nighttime, and then the solar can recharge the battery the next day and you can continue that as long as you need. Well, folks, this has been a brief discussion of the proposed changes to the solar net metering program in Florida. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos and the information that we've put out on Solar Surge, please be sure to click on uh, the like button. You know, I know I always am talking about the like button, click this button, but it re really does help us and it just allows the video to be shown uh, to a wider audience. Uh, and on that note, if, if the information is valuable, uh, go ahead and share the link directly to anybody else that you think will benefit from it. Um, also, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, again, if you're a homeowner that's in the process of researching solar options, uh, or even if, if you're a solar professional and just wanting to keep up to date with all the latest products and technologies and law changes that affect the solar uh, environment. Well, folks, if this is you and you are in the process of actively shopping for solar solutions for your house, 
Um, if you need to get a price quote for your house, or if you already have one, maybe you just need to get a, a comparison quote to make sure you're getting the best deal. Um, as always, feel free to, to reach out to us uh, on the link below there. It'll just take you to our website where you can schedule a virtual meeting with one of our team members here. There, there's no cost to it, there's no obligation, but at least it can show you what the numbers uh, might look like for your home. Well, folks, I thank you again for taking some time to share with Solar Surge today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.